for about three, four months and I took it after four months of graduating and I passed my FE and I kind of like, okay, well, PE, I need four years of experience and I knew it was more field-based. So I'm like, let me get the field experience. And then I kind of left it behind, right? But the thing- You kept all I, the good stuff. I you kept, kept all the good yeah, stuff in your routine. Everything else I really had to sacrifice. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I watched TV during the exam prep. I probably watched one movie throughout the whole time. Um, wow. I never That's watched TV. Me. Your solutions are so important because, um, you know, I don't want students to just like check they got the right answer, B or A. I encourage them to read your answer because you answer the question, then you go deep and you go elaborate on it and you give more information and you give more theory and that helps or aids in the understanding, you know? Hi, Amir. Hey, Wasim. How's it going? Good, good. How are you? I'm doing very well. So, Amir, uh, congratulations on passing your P Power exam in the first attempt with me. Thank you, sir. It's been a long journey, right? Uh, you started in November, right around Thanksgiving time, correct? Of last year? Yeah, I had a, I had a, uh, my birthday was on November 1st. So, I was like, right after my birthday, I'm going to start my exam prep. <laughs> okay. And I signed up for your, I had a party on Friday and I signed up for your course on Saturday. And that's when I started. That's great. It must have been a really good party to carry you through for the next six months. <laughs> because after that, it's just all sacrifices and torture, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I knew it was a long journey. So I'm like, I got to, and it's the winter time. I live in Chicago. So I'm like, it's going to be right. cold and snowy and whatever. So I'm not missing yeah. out on much outside, but uh, it ended up being a lot of sacrifices. Yeah. I remember uh, getting an email from you and, uh, you know, when you told me to pass the exam, I mentioned that email. I'm going to mention that again. End of November, 2020, December, 2023, you sent me an email. You'd be like, you were like, I've completed your entire on-demand program. I'm going to the NCS sample exam. It seems like this is not an easy exam. It seem I'm really looking forward to live training and let me know how it can help me. And my response was that just hang in tight. You're already way ahead of the curve in terms of your preparation, having completed the on-demand content, which contains, I don't know, 200 plus lectures. And those are not Mickey Mouse lectures, right? Each lecture is about 30 minutes long. And I'm not talking about weather and, you know, uh, feelings in those lectures. They are extremely abstract concepts, uh, which I try and uh, slice and dice in small pieces um, and you had already gone through that. So I had no doubt in my mind that you are going to be passing this exam very easily. And then you started the January to March live training session with me. And then you were actively involved, putting your heart and soul into it, showing up every single Saturday and Sunday. And those sessions themselves were three hours at minimum. In some cases, we even clocked four hours, right? Uh, and I had told myself after going through September to November live training, I told myself that, Vaseem, you don't want four-hour long sessions, three-hour long sessions, right? And they don't want three-hour, four-hour long session. So do something about it and try and keep it, you know, within three-hour mark. But it's so difficult. I don't know if you remember, if you've seen that movie, Lincoln. Uh, Abraham Lincoln has a quote in there. It's like uh, he once heard a priest um, um, basically make a comment that, I don't like to talk a lot. Uh, but once I get started, uh, I get too tired to stop. That's not the case. In my case, it's just that I keep the conversation, try to keep it engaging. And I give every single student the opportunity to ask questions, right? And I keep on taking questions and students really enjoy it, right? Because you are able to learn from other students' perspectives. Um, but yeah, three uh, months, 12 weeks passed by, you took the exam and no surprise, passed it in the first attempt. So from your standpoint, if you can walk me through your journey, how it unfolded, the highs and the lows, your initial impressions. And then as you got into the uh, thick of, you know, the whole uh, exam prep, how your impression changed, how you improvised, how you adjusted your routines and how you eventually made it happen. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, yeah, so, you know, I started in November. Um, so to start, I graduated in 2016. I uh, After I graduated, uh, my, my, I went to UIC. UIC doesn't have a power program, although um, towards the end of, like, my last year, they added some power classes. So I took one power class. I might have taken a second class that had some power, but it, it didn't really discuss a lot. It was kind of touching upon the Delta Y, some surface level. I would say FE level power. 
that's as far as it went. And so graduated in 2016 and I, uh, you know, I was fresh out of school. And so I, I got a, I don't, I got some book for the FE and I studied for about three, four months. And I took it after four months of graduating and I passed my FE and I kind of like, okay, well, PE, I need four years of experience. And I knew it was more field-based. So I'm like, let me get the field experience. And then I kind of left it behind. Right. And then eight years later, now I'm like, okay, I need to get back into school. And I knew, you know, from speaking to some people, PE power was not an easy test. It is very convoluted. They do ask deep questions. It's not surface level. So I knew I had to put in some work. So that's why I'm like, all right, after my birthday, well, I had gone to Japan and I'm like, all right, after my birthday in Japan, I'm just going to, I'm just going to bite the bullet and do it. And um, I heard about your course from one of my good colleagues. Um, I remember him posting in May of last year that he passed the FE and he referenced your class. And honestly, I didn't do any other research. I kind of saw, and you know, I went to your website and people often, they put comments and stuff like that. But I noticed a lot of your testimonies were LinkedIn posts. So I clicked and I clicked on three, four people. I saw they were legitimate engineers. They have careers and stuff. I'm like, okay, these are real reviews. These are not just fake reviews. So I'm like, I'm just going to trust, you know, the process. So I signed up for your class and I remember having the first meeting with you and uh, you said, just go through all my on demand and then join the live lecture. And I'm like, okay, perfect. And um, so I had this idea for someone. All right, I'm going to go through his all, all of his on demand. And if I feel confident, I'm just going to go for the test, you know, before you're live. And so I went through your on demand in November and December, and there were a ton of videos. As you said, there were a lot of uh, quizzes, uh, a lot of mini exams. And, uh, you know, you go through a lot of topics and I like your on demand because it, it kind of, it almost starts you from a blank slate where you discuss simple concepts and then you keep on building upon them. And then you get the lectures, the certain lectures that are very deep, right? Like when you go into grounding and you say it's a very convoluted topic and uh, you, you have an hour, 60 minute lecture. And I remember the first time I watched it, I don't say I didn't pay as much attention, but I watched it. But it, in the beginning, you said this might be too deep for the exam. And then almost in my brain, I'm like, oh, okay, so it's going to be an FYI. And so I didn't pay as close attention, but then I didn't realize how important this topic is and unlocking a lot of other topics. And so <clears throat> I went through all of the on-demand. I would say I felt good. And so I'm like, okay, let me test my knowledge. Let me time myself on the practice exam. And then when I took the, the actual NCS practice exam, I think out of 80 questions, I got 45 right, right? And I knew I needed somewhere in the 75% to pass and <clears throat> I felt super shaky. That's when I sent you that email, like, hey, we'll see my, you know, I thought I felt confident. And uh, you know, you told me, don't worry, once you go through the live, it'll it'll be it'll, you know, you will do really good and you're ahead of it. And so I, I felt discouraged because I realized like, oh, the way the practice exam, the questions they're being asked, they're really testing your understanding. It's not plug and check. They're not looking for a formula to fill out. They're asking you like really deep questions, or at least I thought they did. Even like there were questions on top of groundings and that practice sample exam or questions on like, you know, uh, what does this mean? And like, you know, and, and they have the answers. And so that made me realize I really need to dig deep and embrace the learning part of this. And so um, after that, I was looking forward to going through your live class. And I also ordered your book because it has really good Amazon reviews to like supplement my learning. And uh, I also, I found something that's really interesting about your book. Um, you, you know, the level of difficulty definitely goes up. So I feel like sometimes students can like read a question and, and kind of like say, oh, th this, and even some of the reviews I read, they said, this book is too easy, but, or, you know, like uh, it's introductory. I, I, I somewhat I tend to disagree, disagree with them because I think the difficulty of the book goes up, but also your solutions are so important because, um, you know, I don't want students to just check, check they got the right answer, B or A. I encourage them to read your answer because you answer the question, then you go deep and you go elaborate on it and you give more information and you give more theory and that helps or aids in the understanding, you know? And so, um, you know, the, the way I look at it, like, you know, if, if a, if a fighter is practicing and they're just like punching something and they're repeating it, you know, somebody might be like, well, that's not going to help me fight win the fight because they're watching a fight, but they don't realize it's the drill. It's, it's like you're prepping your, your, it's, you know, it's like when soldiers practice because in the war, they want to be auto reacting and 
it's the same way. So what I did was after I finished the on-demand, I went through all of it and then I did it again <coughs> in your live lecture. So every week I would, before your live lecture comes, I would rewatch the on-demand and then I would do the, the, the practice problems. And then when I did it the second time, it's kind of like when you watch a movie uh, kind of a second time and you catch things you didn't catch the first time. And, uh, you know, I, I did that. So I kind of paced myself with your live class and uh, I scheduled the exam a week after the last session of the of, of, of your live class back in January. And uh, yeah, I took this opportunity to learn even during your live classes. You mentioned there were four hours. I really enjoyed that. I mean, you know, I know your time is very valuable and I think you're making yourself available. And uh, I'm not going to ask you questions that you have answered in the on demand or they have simpler answer. I'm going to ask you more difficult questions to capitalize on your time there and to also make use of everybody else's time that's there that's willing to learn because I was always under the impression even if somebody on the class is not following with the conversation that's happening they could rewatch the on demand and once they catch up to that understanding they can rewatch the live and really appreciate the conversation that's unfolding so I I, I went I went through it from that lens and uh, yeah, I went to your live. And after that, um, I remember after the last lecture, um, it was during East, it was on Easter. Uh, I, I did a thorough review and um, I remember retaking the practice exam and I kind of read every question and I kind of tried to think how else they can ask it. But I retook the practice exam. I got 100% and I, I got a crazy level of confidence. And, and when I went to take the test, um, I literally felt like I could start my own uh, class. Like that's how confident I felt. And uh, I remember taking it. I finished it with like an hour and a half to spare. Um, and uh, I, I, I had zero doubt in my mind that I passed. And uh, yeah, you know, the result came, I passed and I was really happy with the result, so. Yeah, I had zero doubt in my mind that you'd pass. I had zero doubt in my mind that you'd pass uh, based on the level of effort that you're putting in from the get go. Right. And you were completely immersed in your exam preparation. And I think that important um, phase in your exam preparation and it sometimes for some students, it happens soon. Sometimes it happens late. Sometimes it happens just at the right time um, was when you realized that in order to pass this exam, you actually have to embrace learning. Right. Uh, if you keep the end goal that I want to pass this exam. Right. And I'm studying for it. I think it's still a little bit vague. And during our weekly live training sessions, every weekend, right? One of the things that I was hammering is that, guys, I don't know how broadly they're going to test you, right? Or how narrowly you're going to be tested. But one thing I can guarantee you is that if you put in the time and effort, understand the concepts from first principles, you know, you are going to be in a better position than most of the students to tackle these questions comfortably, right? And there's, there are no guarantees. I mean, they can test you on anything, right? And depending on your starting point, so you mentioned you had taken only one power systems course. I have students who are going through my program who have mechanical engineering background. I have students who've gone through my program with civil engineering background and passed the exam in the first attempt. But the common denominator amongst everybody who gets it done comfortably is that they take a learning approach which is not easy and i'm sure you would have made a lot of sacrifices right so i don't want to make it like all um uh, fairy tale like that you decide that i'm going to be excited about learning you you know turn on a switch and then you go about you know your merry way right what were the sacrifices that you made i mean like what was the things that you let go right what were the favors that you had to draw upon from your family from your spouse from your friends and maybe even your colleagues, supervisors at work and whatnot, what were the things that you had to give up that you enjoyed dearly in your daily routines and, you know, other social commitments? Yeah, no, 100%. Uh, Wasim, I think you're absolutely right. Um, yeah, it, it's like with anything, right? When people see uh, an athlete like LeBron James, he, he gets a ring and they're like, wow, look at him making all this money. And they don't see all the hard work he put in. You're absolutely right. The sacrifices, yeah. So I am married um, and my wife was uh, pregnant first trimester during the exam prep. Um, and so um, I, I had to make a lot of sacrifices. Um, I, For my spouse, I did 
zero chores in the house. Uh, we have cats and I collected the cat. I scooped the cat litter because of the effect on pregnancy. That's the only thing I did. She did the cooking, she did the cleaning, she did the grocery shopping. We used to like split a lot of these duties. I kind of handed it all off to her. Um, one thing I tried to do, I tried to continue to work out four to five times a week because that's something that's very important for me. So I'm like, okay, I'm not giving up working out. Obviously, my job is very important. So I, I, I couldn't study a lot during work and I played soccer once a week. These are the things. You kept all I, the good stuff. I you kept, kept all the good yeah, stuff in your routine. Everything else I really had to sacrifice. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I watched TV during the exam prep. I probably watched one movie throughout the whole time. Um, wow. I never That's watched TV. Um, yeah, on the weekend, um, I woke up early and um, I saw your live lecture as an opportunity to enhance my understanding. I didn't see it as part of the exam prep or the 20 hours a week. So I wanted to put at least 20 on, on top of the actual lifetime, right? So I was putting 20 hours a week plus your live lecture, which when it goes up to four hours, you know, that's 24 hours, 25 hours. And so, and yeah, to your point too, I saw it as a learning opportunity. I told myself, hey, um, I'm not very familiar with NEC, right? I have used NESC, not a lot, but I have used it. Um, I've referenced it, but I remember the first time looking at NEC, I freaked out. It's written a lot differently. Um, and I, 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 you have mentioned this multiple times, even in your code section, that NESC is very prescriptive. They tell you, that's what you do. That's the headspace. That's the distance. That's this. Even at some point, you said, you don't even need to like purchase the thing. If you just go over these basic principles, you'll be able to answer exam questions because it's prescriptive. If you know how to navigate- That's how it, IEEE. Fine. Right. That's how IEEE standards are. All the ANSI standards, when you pick up IEEE standard 141, they are written very prescriptively as compared to NFPA standards, NEC, NFPA 70, NFPA 497, 499. You're always bouncing around, right? A little bit of information here, a little bit of information there. And then this note applies. No, this note doesn't apply. Something else. I need to look at this exception. So it's convoluted and it's done for a reason. I understand what the reasoning is there. Uh, but yeah, they're different, different standards for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Like NEC, I, I, and, and, you know, you told me, I think I remember asking you, I'm like, well, see, they have five lectures. Uh, they have five codes and you 80% of your lectures on one code. Why are you spending so much time on it? And it made sense because that's where a lot of the focus is. It's, it's where, um, you know, you see it in, in, in everywhere. And that's where a lot of the focus is, right. They, um, th there's a lot of folk, a lot of it is, uh, applied, um, you know, the different, like I remember section six uh, or chapter six, I skipped all the different parts. I remember you asked a number of questions um, during the prep on um, solar panels. And I remember reading that whole part. I remember watching YouTube videos on it just to like get more familiarity. Um, the transformer section, the motor section, the section three on conductors. I mean, sh section two, I mean, uh, article 250 alone on, on, on grounding. Oh my God, if you read it, just read it from the lens of an electrician. The amount of definition, right. like, even in your live lecture, you cover three, four types of grounding. And even then you're like scratching the surface of how deep this code is and how, you know, how important it is to get familiar with it, to get comfortable. And I remember after taking your live lecture and classes, I felt like I can answer any question, not because I read all of it, obviously I didn't, but I felt so confident in navigating it and even learning how to jump around and learning how it's written. And that is so important. So I would encourage anybody taking your class, um, you know, you already put the time to put the courses together, to put the live training, take that time and learn these things because this is not just, um, this is not like calculus or algebra where you're like, okay, where am I gonna use this in real life? You'll definitely use this in real life. You don't know when, I even, I remember um, in, in, in my job and, and I had to discuss with one of the utilities grounding right and they're like oh you need this type of grounding and i'm like no and you know being able to just navigate the nec and say look according to this article that's what they recommend and if you have this then you only need to go this far being able to that easily navigate and point to it not only does it give you so much respect as an engineer because obviously you know how you're referencing to the article you know how you're refer referencing the exceptions but you also feel confident in giving that answer versus feeling like you're bluffing it and chat GBTing it or Googling it. You can even open the code, go exactly to that section, read it and say, oh yeah, th this is why it applies. I would definitely recommend seeing your course as a, 
just take it for what it is, which is um, a learning opportunity to become a more competent engineer. And the passing will come, kind of like how a lot of business people say, focus on making the best product and the money will come. Don't focus on trying to sell <laughs> and make money because you might sell only one thing. It's the same thing. You learn the material, the passing is just a byproduct. It literally, it, it just, you, you would be surprised if you don't pass because you, you would say like, oh, like I, I know exactly how to solve these problems. I, I can even go beyond and ask, I can make this question more harder and still answer it right because you right. get to that level of confidence if you put in the time. But yeah, the sacrifices, um, no TV. Um, I had to give up uh, like, yeah, like vacations. Um, I had to take PTO to study, which is, you know, unfortunate. Um, longer weekends, you know, when you leave work instead of going out or, you know, saying no to friends, I had to, um, you know, study, right? And because oftentimes my, my work is exhausting during the week, um, I had to rely on the weekend to do a lot of my studying. So I had to sacrifice my weekend life, whether it is going out with friends. Because even, you know, somebody might say, I would wake up at 7 a.m., 6 a.m. and study until 6 p.m. And yeah, technically I can go out with my friends at night, but that's going to impact my next day, right? If we go out drinking yeah. or something like that, now the next morning exactly. I'm not as productive. So I have to make these decisions. And uh, unfortunately, I had to say no to my social life a lot during this period because, um, you know, I even remember there was a Super Bowl watching party I had to say no to because um, the, the topics that were covered during that week were difficult and I had to put more time in them. And so, yeah, there were a lot of sacrifices. It wasn't all rosy. But looking back at it, I, I would do it again in a heartbeat. Yeah, see, that's the thing. Uh, and it's, it's a really, truly mindset. And that's basically what um, what is shining through, right? Um, that you consciously went into it. You knew how important it was. And you coordinated, scheduled, you know, discussed, negotiated, and set yourself up for success. So you, you mentioned that you were putting 20 hours on top of the live training, which is about six to eight hours long. And then I'm pretty sure there was additional reflection and working through some of the uh, key concepts and review that you would do after or before sessions every single weekend. Um, sometimes when students, especially it happens more in my FE program, because in my FE live training, I go through the five biggest topics up front. I like to do the most difficult things up front. Uh, I try and do the most important thing in my day early in the morning. I try and leave the easy stuff for the rest of the day. So in my FE program, I go out of sequence. I take the students through math, circuits, electronics, power, and digital systems. And in the first five weeks, sometimes I get emails from students. Well, you said it was 20 hours per week. Why am I putting 25 hours per week and still, you know, barely keeping up? And that tells me a lot about a student's mindset. And my Typical follow back, uh, follow up is that you know things are gonna get easy, okay? We are dealing with the most difficult thing up front. The twenty hour per week is on average, right? When you even it out with easier sections like properties of electrical materials, engineering economics, ethics, there are some easy stuff topics in FE electrical. So it averages out to twenty, right? But then I remind them that guys try and enjoy this process. I know it's painful. I know it's not something you look forward to. But if this is throwing you off balance, then wait until you get to P power. P power is going to really test you mentally, psychologically, physically, right? Uh, so this is sort of a testing ground where you are warming up for the real deal. And P power, in my opinion, is actually the real deal, right? Not to say that FE is easy or a walk in the park. FE has its own challenges, extremely time constrained exam, really doesn't give you any chance to breathe technically, right? Like you cannot blink your eyes uh, three minutes per question, 110 questions. Um, but it's a mindset at the end of the day. Uh, and Amir, and I, I, I am hoping that if there's one thing that students or anybody who's viewing this interview takes out, takes away from this is that really good things happen in engineers' careers once they get P license. And you, off the record, have mentioned me, you know, the, the good things that are happening in your career. That's great. Um, uh, you don't want to, you know, continue with your career. Ideally, like if you're an aspiring engineer, if you are a growth-oriented individual, then you don't should not put yourself in a position where you're just looking at other people, you know, overcoming these challenging obstacles, growing in their career, getting rewarded, right? Taking 
uh, more responsibilities and then essentially you know going places right and the only thing that's holding you back is your lack of passion or your lack of willingness to put in the time and effort to get it done right uh, because in all honesty it will be a difficult journey and the more you put it off the more difficult it gets right that's the other thing it doesn't get easier right it's like that i don't remember which villain it was in hercules or whichever cartoon i think it was in hercules right that um he would chop off the head one of the heads of that villain or snake or whatever that thing was and two heads would basically pop up you remember have you seen hercules right yeah yeah, yeah. oh 100% i think you're right yeah it's like you got to something similar to that take, take it head on you got to take it head on and and one thing yeah. that was seen you you keep you kept reminding this you kept repeating this in the beginning of your course and and you said there are certain things if you don't learn them they'll continue to bite you as this course goes on and the first time i remember even in the live class right you had a, a 3 hour session on three phase and somebody's yes. like delta and y it's square root of 3 and 30 yeah. degrees what are you talking why do you need this much time because <laughs> this is not square root of 3 and and 30 degrees you really need to understand what face to face face to ground you know what these things mean you need to understand per unit it, you know they you know per unit is a is, is a section and they might ask a question or two or you just do a per unit conversion but it will show yeah. up in fault. It will show up in other areas. And if you don't understand this from first principle, if you have a, a shaky understanding of it, you're going to mess up all these questions because fault analysis is hard enough, let alone you don't understand you know, uh, per unit. That's going to make it 10 times harder now. And even you might understand fault analysis, you might know how to solve it, but because you don't understand per unit, um, you might get it wrong. And you know, NCS, they like to give a lot of information in a question and not necessarily every piece of information is being used. And they do that because they want to test your understanding. Are you just trying to plug and chug or do you really understand what we're giving you and can you extract the important information? Like that one practice problem from the NCS when it said instantaneous. It's literally half a page and, and one oh, yeah. answer. I think there was one a word gave up, Yeah, one word gave up the whole answer. So I think it's, I think it's you're absolutely right. Take the time to learn it because the more you learn it and the more confident you are in it, not only do you do well on the test, but in the future, when you use this in your career or when you encounter another question, you're able to more confidently reference the code or search the exact thing to find out what's being asked. It's like, it's so it's so valuable. And I feel like in the life of an engineer, we're problem solvers. And in order for you to solve a problem, you need to understand the problem. And that's what that's where I think the preparation and the journey comes in with this with this practice. Yeah, I couldn't agree more with you, Amir. And uh, if anybody wants to take a look at the ANSI sample exam, that's the problem that you were referring to the P power sample exam. I think it's in the seventies. Uh, there are eighty problems in the seventies. So there's a full like paragraph of a problem, and the giveaway, the keyword was just instantaneous. And you don't have to even solve that problem to <laughs> to get to the answer. And a lot of things like that, right? So uh, you have to be able to filter out the noise and focus on the signal. And that in itself is a sign of competency. So thanks a lot for your time, uh, Amir. Really appreciate it. Um, and uh, once again, many congratulations on this wonderful achievement. It's uh, something that you thoroughly, truly earned by putting in the time and effort. And um, not only did you set yourself up for success in terms of your career growth, got the credential and everything recognition. Um, but I think that the focus on learning, as you already pointed out, has given you that confidence boost, right? Where you know that I can actually pick up these keywords, pick up the lingo, you know, talk to the right people, understand um, how the code is to be related. And, and that in itself sort of results in a snowball effect where you can absorb more knowledge, right? And become more smarter and more more competent. And it was great having you in the program, I must say. The quality of questions that you asked, right? Um, I would always look forward to your questions because none of the questions that were coming from Amir was a straightforward question. <laughs> you were you were an examiner in, in, in your own self, right? Where And I relish those opportunities when students push me to the limit, right? It's not... Uh, uh, and never ever feel threatened. It's not that I'm trying to brag about it, but it's 
my attitude is that okay is this some if there's something that i don't know i'm going to learn right we'll try and figure it out if i'm not able to answer that question right away which rarely happens right if at all then i'm going to look into it and get you guys the right answer so that that sort of puts me on my toes right keeps me on my toes and and, um, you, know, and you you having right? in the program was a great experience for me as well yeah go ahead one thing one thing i do i respect that about you I, a lot i think i think that's um competent teacher show this um you're very experienced and and you're a very smart guy but also you realize that you don't know everything and sometimes if somebody ask a question and that could be a deep topic you're not afraid to say according to this research that's what it is and if you can find something else that doesn't say it please share it with me that definitely shows a teacher that's not only confident in their knowledge but they're also confident that mistakes could be made and if something contradicts this, it's a learning opportunity. It takes a lot. I even remember one of my doctors wasn't afraid to Google something. I, I told him like, I read this, they Googled it, they read it and they're like, oh, according to this, and they weren't afraid to even share their knowledge. I think that shows a lot about the person and, and their ability to say, there's always something to learn and, and you know, um, anybody can be challenged. And, and that shows, um, you know, it, it doesn't let somebody's ego get in the way of learning. So I, I really do appreciate that about you. And I, it makes me trust your answers because you're not speaking from ego. You're speaking from somebody who understands, who can learn. And, and yeah, like you shared, I think we were talking about, um, uh, I think was it generators? When you when you shared that article with me and I read it and I saw the solution, I'm like, um, oh, wow. Yeah, that's that's absolutely right. It makes sense. And, uh, you know, it, it yeah, it, it made me satisfied. Another thing I would say that's really good about your program with Seaman, honestly, it, you actually you're actually a really good connection and you're a really nice, genuine guy. Um, beyond just the exam, you go above and beyond and you say, hey, uh, you know, to get licensed, you got to share your experience. You got to share the four years and, and you're like, send me, I'll give you comments. You provided coaching there, even from a recommendation perspective or, or giving a personal reference. You said, I recommend, you know, reaching out to your network and things like that. So it's amazing having you as a connection. So beyond just the exam, I think, I think it's almost like a, it's like gaining a mentor for life. So um, it's it's really good, and and you even you 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 have a community around that you've created. That it's more than just getting a, a practice for the exam, or like people don't feel like they're just a number or they're signing up for something. They actually have access to a person in the community for for good, right? And that's something that I don't think a lot of people are able to provide. Um, you know, and in, in, whether in their training or in their programs, you know. So that's something I've really appreciated about you. It's more than just about exam prep. It's like you gain a mentor and a and a colleague. Yeah, thanks a lot. I appreciate that, uh, Amir. You know, we live and learn, and uh, one of the best aspects of what I do, to be honest, is the fact that I'm able to see the effort that students are putting in, that I'm putting in uh, along with their journey, and then see a result, a very concrete result. Okay, this guy got what he was working towards and is moving on to, this guy or girl moving on to bigger and better things, right? So that's uh, that's all fun. Uh, again, thanks again. And uh, I look forward to staying in touch with you. And, uh, you know, you are... You put in the time and effort and guys, please listen, without the time and effort, you know, nothing is going to happen, right? No matter which program, my program, somebody else's program you go for, for P power exam, you have to put in your time and effort. And by using effective exam prep resources is going to become easier, but still the common denominator is going to be you and your effort. Okay. All right. Thanks. Everybody. Thank you. Okay. See you better. Thank you. Take care. If you like this video, then please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Feel free to ask me any questions in the comment section of this video below. You can find tons of success stories of my FE Electrical and P Power students over here. And if you want to learn more about preparation of FE Electrical and Computer Exam and the P Power Exam, then check out these playlists over here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon in the next video.